everyone, I'm Miss Beth. I am in the Cartwright Community Garden bringing you a very special stories from the garden today. I'm going to read Pangea and a Kid Called Sean. This is written by Calvin Terrell and illustrated by Anthony Velasquez. Wonderful things come from dreams. On Pangea, Dreams helped save the whole planet. These wonderful dreams came to children of Pangea who wanted justice, love, and peace. What or who was in these marvelous dreams? Do you want to know? Okay, here we go. In a world that may be far or close from them, or those even yous and me's, live beautiful lives surrounded by big sky, gigantic mountains, and tall trees. This world is gentle, fun, and ever so pretty. Living things on Pangea are happy on a farm or in a city. On Pangea, harmony and spirit flow like hot fudge over soft ice cream. Living things love and respect one another, even when disagreeing. Pangea was not always as wonderful as the world we now see. It was a world full of fear, hate, and stubborn hostility. The planet keepers, Poppy Sky, and Mama Nature know this story firsthand. Both of them, by accident, united all the creatures of this land. Enough of that! Let's get back to how Pangea, a planet of united variety, came to be. This story can be your story with dreams, wishes, and a belief in possibility. In Pangea's great growth into love, a new life was born. Unlike any other, Sean, was unique in size, color, and form. Meet Sean, a small child not reading his story or her story, just your story, or a story of children's hopes to end hate, hurt, and live in loving glory. Do you believe, dream, or wish? Near water, on red dirt, by a fire, while wind blew, two Pangeans were talking and joking with nothing else to do. While talking and joking, they were unaware with no clue. Their actions would bring this story to another world, especially to you. These two Pangeans were friends. They truly cared for one another. While they were talking, one disagreed strongly with the words of the other. They began to argue and fight with words, looks, and emotions. Very quickly, the fighting grew stronger like thunderstorm waves on oceans. The Pangeans walked away from each other with hurt-filled hearts that became anger. They no longer were friends. The anger grew and grew between them into danger. Dangerous because these Pangeans told others about their disagreement and fight. Gossip about the fight spread a disease of dis-ease to 1,000 Pangeans by the first night. The fight gossip was changing. It grew bigger and worse than the real truth. Some Pangeans liked that there was a fight and wanted an excuse to hurt others, and indeed they did. Pangeans started picking sides. Some went left and some went right. The ones not sure went to hide. The planet had divided. Despair, sorrow, and pain of war hurt everything. Pangean's hearts got so heavy that the birds and children forgot how to sing.
many who felt lost, unsure, or had no other places to hide began to put harmful stuff in their bodies to hide the pain inside. The pain didn't hide, the hurt grew bigger. Of course, the planet keepers, nature and sky, saw this destruction, hurt, pain, and despair. The greatest force had sent them to Pangaea to ensure the world's safety, love, and care. The sight of Pangaea's destruction, hate, and pain made Poppy's skies and Mama Nature's bodies sick, feelings hurt, and minds insane. With trembling fear, the planet keepers' bodies began to shake. This trembling caused the land to experience many powerful Pangaea quakes. Their eyes filled with sadness, the planet keepers began to cry. And on Pangaea, floods came crashing from strong storms by wind and sky. Seeing the wars made the planet keepers' bellies get sick. The result on Pangaea were vomiting volcanoes and the lava was deadly thick. The planet keepers, planet, and Pangaean's actions were all connected. A system interwoven like fabric or a chain and too complex to be dissected. The Pangaeans became fearful of these world-shaking natural destructions. They temporarily forgot hate between them while working together to protect their constructions. The planet keepers saw this unity among Pangaeans working to survive. Seeing this pleased the keepers and again they were happy to be alive. Open the curtains of Pangaea and let the sun shine on this great peace were the words of Mama Nature and Poppy Sky. The first light was seen in the east. Mama Nature again sang songs of harmony because during the fighting this was hard to do. The sweet sounds of her song were felt and heard on Pangaea in a soothing wind that blew. Poppy Sky took a bubble bath to cleanse his sorrows and refresh his spirits so he could again fly. As he splashed with joy, bubble puffy pillow white clouds appeared in Pangaea's new beach blue sky. Pangaeans saw that the rain stopped, volcanoes cooled, and land, land had become still. This calm and glorious day came because there was no fighting and the keepers were not ill. In this quiet peace, the adult Pangaeans began to remember their hate for each other. On this beautiful day, they again divided, throwing mean stares and words at one another until they heard, Please stop! In the spirit of respect, these words blasted a thunderous, powerful sound. This surprising request came from the smartest and smallest Pangaeans that could be found, children. During the hate when rain came, land shook, and that deadly boiling lava flowed, you big Pangaeans told us to work together, and now we have new friends we want to hold, said the kids. Then they said, with respect to you, we say stop because we have so much love in our hearts. There is no room in our hearts for hate, so we will not let the fighting again start. And all the children of Pangaea joined hand in hand, all friends, cousins, sisters, and brothers. When the last two children joined, a brilliant flash occurred with the rays of all Pangaea's great colors. 
two wonderful things happened in that flash. With love, every child of Pangea found the caring courage to take a stand and be heard. And unseen to all, a new Pangean was born. It was specially delivered by a purple bird where it was delivered well. High in the sky, perched on a mountain in a soft cloud shaped like a baby bed. Over the cloud bed, rail peaked a kid with one yellow, black, white, red, and brown head. The children's love had called a kid named Sean into being. Sean is an orphan who's blind, not to truth, and through feeling is how it does its seeing. The children took on the responsibility of leading Pangea to peace. Because their minds were open, they lived for love and had a faith that would not cease. The children's egos were small like their two, three, and four foot bodies. They said, to have peace, you grown-ups need to flush your selfish ego down the potty. And the grown-ups did. Over long days, nights, and much sharing of stories and listening with care, with the children leading and loving everyone's heart, mind, and Pangea were being repaired. When the children's work got real hard and every idea had been tapped, the kids would get a little sleepy, breathe deep, and then take a long nap. While sleeping, Sean would visit their dreams to share helpful ideas in a loving, humble way. The kids would wake up with vigor and hope to take Sean's message to save the day, and they did every time. The Pangeans who put harmful stuff inside them to quiet their inner pain with patience, love, and support over time, they too joined the united chain. Mama Nature and Pappy Sky are best friends, equal yet different in form and ability. Adopted that kin named Sean to love and be Pangea's symbol of the planet's harmony. This story is a story with many messages and wishes, some harder than others to achieve. Know this, Pangea's children and a kid called Sean did it because in dreams they believed. What do you believe? That was Angia and a Kid Called Sean, written by Calvin Terrell and illustrated by Anthony Velasquez.